what it is, man. Detroit versus everybody, man. Detroit, we rep the hardest, man. We gain the hardest. You know what you know what it is, man. Detroit, CJ, I'll let your boy when we get home. All right, man. So Joshua Cloudy says that he comes out again and says that he threw the fight this time with Manny Pacquiao saying why he threw the fight. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and the subscribe button. It's the bell icon button. He just did a recent interview. I seen him boxing uh, news 24-7. I think it was Prime TV. He did an interview with and explained why his manager uh, played a huge role in him, you know, not, uh, you know, with throwing the Manny Pacquiao fight. Now, you got to remember, too, he actually beat Miguel Cotto in a lot of people opinion before that fight. A lot of people thought he beat Miguel Cotto in that fight. And they gave Cotto the decision. This is I post. This is post Mark Rito situation, and he did beat Cotto. And Cotto, you know, robbed him in my opinion. And went on to fight Manny Pacquiao. He still got. They still did right with him. He got his Pacquiao uh, shot. I think they fought at fought at uh, J World AT and T Stadium. And um, yeah, I mean, you can watch the fight. He deliberately. Didn't throw shots. He threw them here and there. When he threw shots, he hurt Manny Pacquiao. He was rocking Pacquiao. And it seemed like he wasn't doing much. So, um, I mean, you know, he said he threw a fight because the manager was making all the money. He said that uh, it was $100 each pay-per-view, I guess, maybe internationally or something like that. I don't know. And he said he only got $3 out of each pay out of the $100 pot per viewer. And that was only after 300,000 buys. Now, you know, you hear Canelo, he get like 10, like, yeah, I can't remember. The going rate is 3% per buy. Okay, that's the going rate. Canelo gets, you know, more than that. I think it's somewhere maybe close to 10%. I could be wrong. But that's after 100,000 buys. Now, I think they say for a regular fighter, it's 3% after 200,000. Maybe it is 300,000, so. I think it's after 200 or something like that. You know, once they flip a profit, then they, they 3% kick in. So um, he said that the manager, he was supposed to get $1 million. The manager took a million. They were supposed to negotiate another $2 million or something like that. And, you know, I think he ended up getting $1.3 million. But he's supposed to get really around two. So really his, you know, he said that the, uh, the manager also took 33% of the profit. So long story short, it, Vic, Vic something, Scalapo, you know, and then he said that he still had a three-year run with him after that. So he had just signed with him. He said, you know, he tried to negotiate where he take 25%. He took eight. He didn't want to redo that. And I miss him. They look at boxers like they look at worse than they look at musicians. You're a musician. All they do is get you with the money. You come in, you broke. You know what I'm saying? They, and then when you broke, ain't got nothing. They give you an advance, you know, for a million dollars, knowing they're going to have to recoup. You're going to have to repay back that million dollars with interest. Then on top of the million dollar advance, you know, um, you know, probably after that, after you didn't bought a whole bunch of bullshit, not even reinvested it, thinking they're going to recoup it. You know, then it hits you with, you know, say you're publishing for thirty three thousand or five or fifty thousand. You know what I'm saying? Say your masters for another fifty thousand. You know, and once you blew out, you blew on through that million because million ain't really shit. You know, even back in the day, it ain't really nothing when when you're trying to keep up a lifestyle. You buy this house, you buy this car, you buy your mama house and car, and what you realize is, guess what? I ain't, I'm all if I'm gonna be successful, I'm always touring, so I don't need to buy all these houses and all these people I'm taking care of. They can't maintain what I bought them because they leeching off me, and before you know it, a million that million ain't shit. Now you selling your publishing your masters away. Now only you think only re, only how this is a great scenario to sign in if you don't hit if you don't if you don't go on to have longevity. If you don't go on, if your single just a hit and you don't produce an album, if your album ain't a hit, that you know what I'm saying, you know, but that's the only 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 scenario. They look at the 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 athletes even worse than that, you know. Give you give you some money up front, or, or woo you what they can do for you, how they can be different. We are gonna tell them make your career. They woo you, they talk to you, they look at you all like dumb idiots, and they finesse you. Instead of you know dudes going to get a lawyer and talking to a lawyer like, look here, man, I'm about to blow. You know what I'm saying? Do me this solid. When I get my advance, I make sure you took care of. You can put it in writing. You're a lawyer. Look out for me. Or if your family can't get together enough money for a lawyer to look through this contract, you know, 
I don't know what to say. And that's how they get dudes. That's how they get them. They sell their whole life away. And this dude don't take a punch. The manager don't give a punch. And he was happy with what he got. He probably made out like a fat rat versus Pacquiao. And Cloudy said he fought for free. And should they have to give people their money back? Absolutely. You you looked at a fixed fight. Especially all the people who bet money on pa on, on Cloudy. That, that's a fixed fight. And the consumer should get their money back. People who bought the pay-per-view, people who bought bought tickets, bought parking, bought popcorn, all that shit. They all should be uh recompensated if it worked. You know, off of his part, his bad decisions hurt everybody else involved. And he said, you know, they said, why you just didn't walk away? You know, why you didn't complain to top rank or Pacquiao people? You know, I think it was top rank at the time. He said that it was either that or no fight. He shouldn't have fought then. So look, like he made 300 and some thousand dollars, apparently. That's what he said. He said 1.3. Unless he took the three point. So basically, he basically said he fought for free. That ain't Pacquiao problem. That ain't Pacquiao problem. That's his problem. And um and it's an unfortunate one. It's a truly unfortunate pro uh problem, but Gotta have your business together, bro. Um, even back then, y'all, you gotta be smart about what you signing. You signing something and they give you a whole bunch of money up front, man. Just think like, hey, all money ain't good money. You know, that's why you got guys like Jay Z who can come in the game and been patient and came in with money and made out the right way. You know, but boxing is a poor man sport. Who really coming into the game with money and with business sense? So they, just like musicians, these rappers stuff, they take advantage of, of they take advantage. They take advantage of it. That's why I say on the next uh album, the next deal that the musicians sign and stuff, you know, then they know more, they're smarter about the deal and all that type of stuff, and they get better deals. But, you know, the chances of your average rapper singer, you know, making it into a second deal is slim to none. You lucky to have two good albums. You know, so the, the longevity in music is shorter than the longevity in, in sport and boxing. It's crazy. But it ain't something that we are. He went into detail, but we are. He already had interviews saying he threw the fight. And people act like, you know, they go back. You said we can't get credit to the Sugar Ray Robinsons and to the Jack Dempsey's because they was throwing fights back then. And you don't know who was throwing the fights and how good they were. They throwing fights right now. They fixing games right now. People crazy if you think that still ain't going on. It was a mobster just talking about how some of these, you know, athletes, you know, uh, they get in debt with, with them. You have hundreds of athletes with millions of dollars getting debt. It's the same reason how a dude at the at the at a good job is behind the eight ball, bro. I always say this, man, you know, live below your means. If you making twenty, twenty five, thirty dollars an hour, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand a year, don't live right there. Shit, the wind blow the wrong way, you in trouble. You always live a good. If you eighty thousand dollar dude, live like a fifty five, sixty thousand dollar life, fifty if possible. Twenty dollar dude, you know, live around the fifteen, sixteen mark, seventeen mark. You know, that way, you know, you can save, and that way, you can have some room for comfort. Yeah, and when you save enough, then you can go, you know, do it big. But it's just, it's all, it's all, it's all literacy, bro. It's all, it's all knowledge. Financial literacy, being smart. A lot of these dudes ain't smart. You got some people that, that believe the only way you can learn business and stocks and finances and all that is by going out there and fail. There's so many resources that could prepare you to, to be successful in your first attempt. <laughs> you know, it's no different than, than the street. If it seemed too good to be true, and they say, well, no matter how great a fighter you is, we got a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand for you right now, sign this contract. It's too good to be true. I need to have somebody look at it. Adrian Broner said Bobby Irm did that to him. He walked away from me. He knew well, he knew it. That's just that's just him being smart. You know, A B was a real smart dude, and he's a street smart nigga. You know, everybody, every nigga know every guy in the people in the ghetto already know. Somebody come and say, Well, you know, we got three hundred thousand for you. You know what I'm saying? 
You are, you already know what's some you know, what's what's the strings attached? Oh, sign right here. No, no, no. They can give me three hundred thousand. That mean they about to make three. They about to make three million off me minimum. You know, and it's hard when you put that amount of money in people's faces or somebody talk a good game. And, and, and they, you know, Cloudy got finesse. And it's people out here. I see people, daddies out here, daddy trainer managers taking 60% of the pot. 60% of their money, bro. This, this contract's with the daddy taking 50, 60% of the money. So. I mean, it is what it is, man. But I don't surprise me. He be, yeah, we seen it not too long after that fight. He went back over to I think he from Ghana or whatever and said that you know he kind of laid down. So I mean, it is what it is. It ain't nothing new. But him going to detail why, you know. But you know, fixed fight still going on. Fixed sports still going on. Ain't nothing different from the early 1900s till now. You know what I'm saying? You, you just they do a better job covering it up. So. Um, check out the box on this playlist, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and the subscribe button, hit the bell icon button, hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications, we go live or drop a video, financially want to support the channel, cash app, dollar sign, cjgood313, Venmo, cjgood313, PayPal link description, hit the link tree, find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine, appreciate the love and support, peace.